Hi everyone, welcome back to Actual English. I'm Jennifer Clyde. It's time for lesson 34, and today let's talk about commutes. So, let me begin by asking you a question. How long does it take for you to go from your workplace to home, or the other way around, I guess? How long does it take you to go to work from home, or to school from home, and then back home from school, or back home from work? Usually, I guess people travel 30 minutes to even 40 minutes to get to work or school. Some people are lucky enough to live very close by to their workplace or even to school. In those cases, you wouldn't exactly call it a commute. For example, if you go to work and it takes you 10-15 minutes, that's not a commute. But if it takes you more than 30 minutes in general, you can definitely call that a commute. So let's focus on today's topic, which happens to be, once again, commutes. Let's begin with today's actual talk. When you have a job to go to, mm -hmm. uh, what time do you absolutely have to leave by? Oh, I have deadlines to work by, but I think I try to leave at least an hour before I have to get there. Because mm -hmm. it takes me at least 10 minutes to walk to the subway station with all my luggage. Um, if I can help it, I try not to take the taxi, but if I'm running a little late, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, how do you get to work? Uh, well, it's it's about a 15-minute walk to the subway. Oh, my goodness. And that's a, like, fast walk. Uh -huh. And then uh, I try to time it so I just get there at the right time. I use the, you know, one of those subway apps. I've noticed that you're always early for all your appointments. Yeah, that's respect. Yeah, that's respect. <laughs> Sometimes when, <laughs> when I have translation deadlines to work by, I tend to send that right before I leave the house. Because mm -hmm. I'm up in the morning at around 5 or 6, mm -hmm. but I'm still push for time getting to my next appointment, which is a little bit stressful, but yeah, like you said, the subway app is really helpful. Yeah, so I get to the subway and then get on and deal with all the people. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's rush hour, I try to avoid rush hour if mm -hmm. at all possible. Um, which subway lines do you tend to use? I take the Kyung Ui line and then, uh, and then line six usually. Line six, oh, interesting. So you live a little bit out from the center of the city. Yeah, I out, out in Ilsan, the far end of Ilsan. Oh, yeah. where, the, where the weather's nice. Not the weather, the air is nice. <laughs> the air is a little bit different, yeah. It's yeah. a little cooler, actually. Do you drive any, any day of the I week? I try not to drive. That's true. Parking's a pain. Oh, parking. Bumper um, to bumper traffic. Traffic's a pain, and, you know, the gas is expensive, so yeah. uh, I only do it if I really have to. If you can deal with the walking a little bit, I think the subway is the fastest, most accurate way to commute. Well, I think the subways in Seoul are really... Uh, well put together. I mean, oh, that's true. They may look yeah. like a tangled mess, but no, no, it's logical. you can get anywhere you want that's pretty true. quickly. Yeah, uh, and the subway apps, like you said, they're really helpful because they tell you when the next train is coming, mm -hmm. where How to get off exactly, mm -hmm. and and what the fare is as well. So that's really helpful. Okay. Well, as we all know, Peter and Joanne, they are freelancers. Uh, they don't just go to one workplace every single day, but they go to different jobs on a daily basis, right? Uh, the same for me, so I wouldn't exactly be able to talk about my commute to a certain workplace. Uh, but in their case, they did talk about how long it takes to walk from home to the subway station. And Peter even mentioned which lines he takes when it comes to taking the subway. So let's take a look at what they talked about. Here is today's actual talk conversation. Now, in the beginning, Peter began by saying, when you have a job to go to, when you have to go somewhere for work, in other words, what time do you absolutely have to leave by. So absolutely, he's just stressing, no matter what, what time do you have to leave your home by, okay? So, well, Joanne says, I have deadlines to work by or deadlines to meet, but I think I try to leave at least an hour before I have to get there. So, she's saying an hour before, meaning an hour in advance. 
before I have to get there. So she's saying, if I have to get to my job by three o'clock, then I try to leave at least an hour before three o'clock, meaning at least by two o'clock. Okay, and she says because it takes me at least ten minutes to walk to the subway with all my luggage. Let's break it up. So she's saying she needs to leave home at least an hour in advance. That's a long time. Why? She explains because it takes me at least ten minutes to walk to the subway station from my place. And then she has to take the subway, and that'll take a lot longer. So just to be sure, or make sure that she's not late for work, she leaves home an hour before the time she has to be at work by. So at least ten minutes to walk to the subway. I added station for you. Joanne just said、uh, walk to the station.、Uh, walk to the subway. Sorry. You can say walk to the subway or walk to the subway station. It's your choice. And then she added, "With all my luggage." Hmm. What is luggage, everyone? Luggage. There's another word for it. Baggage, right? Luggage, baggage, and an easy word is bag or bags. But usually, when we say I carry a bag, or if you have more than one bag, we say I carry two bags, five bags. Ten bags, so we add an s to make it into a plural form. But when it comes to words such as luggage or baggage, it does not matter how many bags you have. Never add an s to those words. So even if you have five bags, you can say, "I have a lot of luggage to carry." I have a lot of baggage. Okay. Uh, remember, they're always used in the singular form. So she has lots of bags, lots of things to carry, and she has to walk ten minutes to the subway station. So she tries to make sure she leaves home early, an hour before she has to get to her destination. And then she says,、um, "If I can help it, I try not to take a taxi." Now, in today's actual talk, the "ah"、uh, was actually.、Mm, The she said, I try not to take the taxi. That's fine, but I think it's more common to say take a taxi. So she tries her best not to take a taxi. But, hmm. But if I'm running a little late, this is if. Okay, if I'm running a little late, I do. Meaning I do take a taxi. What does to run late mean? It means to run behind. So, if you have to be at a certain place by two o'clock, and it takes you ten minutes to get there, but it's already one、uh, fifty-eight, then of course you're running behind, which means you're running late. Okay,、It、means to run behind, to run late. And then she asks, "How do you get to work?" Now, Peter says, "Well, it's about a fifteen-minute walk to the subway." Okay. Always, when you want to add how long it takes, a time duration. Remember, add the a,、uh, and then at the end, just minute or hour. For example,、uh, a fifteen-minute walk, a ten-hour bus ride. Okay, it's never minutes in this case. Okay, a fifteen-minute walk. So it takes him fifteen minutes on foot. Or it takes him 15 minutes if he walks to the subway station. Now Joanne says, "Oh my goodness!" And then he says, "And that's at fast walk." In other words, that is if I walk at a fast pace. You can also say at fast walking. Okay, it's your choice. And then he says, "I use one of those subway apps." Apps, as you probably already know, is just short for applications, right? App, app. And then Joanne says, "I've noticed that you're always early for all your appointments." That's right, always early, not late, but always early for your appointments. And Peter says, "You know what? Yeah, that's respect. It's true. He's always early for his appointments." Anyhow, Joanne agrees. Yeah, that's respect. And then she says, "I'm up in the morning." Okay, at a certain time, at Around five or six, meaning I'm up. I wake up in the morning at around five or six, but I'm still pushed for time. You can make use of this expression. 
in many different situations. If you usually don't have enough time and you're running around because you don't have enough time, you can say, I'm always pushed for time, meaning I don't have enough time. I'm always in a hurry. I'm always in a rush. So she says, I wake up at five or six, but I'm still pushed for time getting to my next appointment. Now, Peter says, I try to avoid rush hour. Okay, try to avoid rush hour if at all possible. Okay, so he says, if at all possible, meaning I try my best to avoid rush hour. Now, which subway lines do you tend to use? You can ride a subway, you can ride a bus or even a car, but usually when you ask questions about which subway line someone rides, yeah, you would often say use. Which subway line do you use? Okay, which subway line did you use? So, Peter says, I take the Kyungi line and then line six. I've underlined this for you because here, let's take a look. The something line. And then what about when it comes to numbers? There's a number two line, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it goes on. But of course, in that sense, you would say line first and then name the number of that line. Line six, not six line, okay? So once again, Peter says, I take the Kyungi line and then line six. This could be confusing, so we'll take a look at that later on, okay? And moving on, uh, Joanne says, do you drive any day of the week? Do you drive any day of the week? Peter says, I try not to drive. So he tries to avoid rush hour and he also tries not to drive. Parking is a pain. A pain? He's not saying that it's painful. It doesn't hurt to park, but parking is a pain. If you say something is a pain, you're saying that it is very troublesome. It's a burden sometimes. It's difficult, okay? It's very stressful. So he says, parking is so stressful. Parking is so difficult, meaning parking is a pain. And gas is expensive too. So he also mentions hmm, gas prices. Gas is expensive. Now, Joanne says, I think the subway is the fastest, most accurate way to commute. Commute can be used as a noun and a verb. In this case, it is used as a verb, okay? To commute, I think the subway is the fastest and the most accurate is another way of saying it. Fastest, we all know, yeah, it's the quickest, it's the fastest. Most accurate, accurate means exact. That's right, yeah. So oftentimes if people take the subway, they will most likely get to their destination on time and not be late. Moving on, Peter says, well, I think the subways in Seoul are really well put together. Put together, you may think combine, right? A and B can be put together. They can be combined, but it also means to create, construct, to make. So he's saying the subway system in Seoul or the subways in Seoul are very well put together. They're very well constructed, right? You can get anywhere you want pretty quickly. That's true. If you take the subway, you can get anywhere pretty quickly. Okay, let's check out what else they said. Now, Joanne says that's true. And the subway apps, once again, subway applications, like you said, they're really helpful because they tell you when the next train is coming and where to get off, okay? So it's like a friend that tells you, oh, it's time to get off. You should get off at this station, at that station. You should transfer here, there. So she's saying that the subway app is very helpful because it gives you all sorts of information, such as this, when the next train is coming and where you should get off. And of course, Peter adds, that's true. And it also tells you how long it will take you, that is, to get to your destination or to get to wherever you're trying to get. Okay, that is all for today's actual talk conversation. Let's take a moment to listen to it one more time. When you have a job to go to, mm -hmm. uh, what time do you absolutely have to leave by? Oh, I have deadlines to work by, but I 
think I try to leave at least an hour before I have to get there because mm. it takes me at least 10 minutes to walk to the subway station with all my luggage. Um, if I can help it, I try not to take the taxi, but if I'm running a little late, mm. I do. Yeah. How do you get to work? Uh, well, it's, it's about a 15 minute walk to the subway. Oh my goodness. And that's how like fast walk. Uh -huh. And then, uh, I try to time it. So I just get there at the right time. I use the, you know, one of those subway apps. I've noticed that you're always early for all your appointments. Yeah, that's respect. Yeah, that's respect. Sometimes <laughs> when I have translation deadlines to work by, I tend to send that right before I leave the house. Because mm -hmm. I'm up in the morning at around 5 or 6, mm -hmm. but I'm still pushed for time getting to my next appointment, which is mm -hmm. a little bit stressful. But yeah, like you said, the Subway app is really helpful. Yeah, so I get to the Subway and then get on and deal with all the people. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's rush hour, I try to avoid rush hour if mm -hmm. at all possible. Um, Which subway lines do you tend to use? I take the Kyung Ui line and then uh, and then line six. Usually. Line six. Oh, interesting. So you live a little bit out from the center of the city. Yeah, I out out in Ilsan, the far end of Ilsan. Oh, yeah. where the where the weather's nice. Not the weather. The air is nice. <laughs> the air is a little bit different. Yeah, it's yeah. a little cooler actually. Do you drive any any day of the I week? I try not to drive. That's true. Parkings. A pain. Oh, parking, bumper um, to bumper traffic. Traffic's a pain, and you know, the gas is expensive, so yeah, uh, I only do it if I really have to. If you can deal with the walking a little bit, I think the subway is the fastest, most accurate way to commute. Well, I think the subways in Seoul are really uh, well put together. I oh, mean, oh, that's true, they may yeah. look like a tangled mess, but no, no, it's logical. you can get anywhere you want that's pretty true. quickly. Yeah, uh, and the subway apps, like you said, they're really helpful because they tell you when the next train is coming, mm -hmm. where to How get off exactly, mm -hmm. and, and what the fare is as well. So that's really helpful. Okay. okay, welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's actual talk once again. And now it's time for us to move on to our next segment. First of all, let's take a look at some vocab words, and then let's practice using the patterns in actual sentences. Now, as we see, we have four vocab words for you. First of all, absolutely, just to make sure that you make use of this word. It's not a difficult word. Some other uh, words you can use are positively or certainly. Positively, you can make the T sound, but you can also say positively, positively, or certainly, but absolutely. Remember, you can say that is great, but if you want to stress it, you can say that is absolutely great. So make use of using these words in your sentences, in your conversations. Now, rush hour is an easy word, but the reason I picked it is because I want us to mm, practice the pronunciation. Rush hour, rush hour. Hmm. Try to pronounce it smoothly, as if it's one word. So try after me. Rush hour, rush hour. So it sounds more like shower, right? Ra shower, ra shower. We take a shower, rush hour, rush hour. Okay, one more time. Rush hour. Try to pronounce it as one word. That's good. And then moving on to most accurate. They were talking about the subway system in Korea. It's very accurate. It's most accurate and it is the fastest, right, to get anywhere. So it also means most exact. And put together once again. Hmm. Put together can mean to combine, to make as one, but it can also mean to arrange or create. Or as we were talking about the subway system, it can also mean to construct to put together, to make, okay? Moving on to some patterns then. There was run late. I think it was Joanne that said, uh, although I wake up at five or six in the morning, um, something like that, ah, she said she was pushed for time, but often she tries not to take a taxi. If, now, she is running late, she does though. So run late means to run behind, yes. You're running behind, meaning running late. You are late for something. You can say, I'm always running late in the mornings. So this means, hmm, I'm always running around in a rush in the mornings. Here's another sentence. I was running late, so I had to grab a cab. 
So for example, if you normally take the subway or if you normally take a bus to work, you may even bike to work or walk. But if you want to tell somebody, I was behind, I was running behind or running late, I was late for work, so I had to grab a cab. I had to take a taxi is another way. Try using grab a cab. This gives you a total image of how much of a hurry you were in, okay? So that it's a stress that you just grabbed a cab very quickly. One more time, I was running late, so I had to grab a cab, okay? Our next one is a so-and-so minute walk, a drive, subway ride, bus ride from one place to another. Let's practice. My office is a 10 minute walk from the bus stop. Keep in mind, always a so-and-so minute, okay? So a 10-minute walk, okay? Not 10 minutes walk, a 10-minute walk, a five-minute walk, okay? What about this one? My workplace is a 40-minute drive from home. One more time. My workplace is a 40-minute drive from home, meaning it takes me 40 minutes to drive from work to my workplace or vice versa. Here's our final pattern. Let's see. Take the so-and-so line. In today's actual talk, it was Peter saying that he takes the Gyeonggi line. And also you can take subway line two, three, four, five, six, and so on, okay? The order kind of switches, so yeah, it uh, could be confusing. For example, you could say, I take the Pundang line, okay, always. The so-and-so line, then transfer to line two. I stress one more time, in this case, the line comes afterwards. But when you want to mention the number of the line, the line goes in the beginning, okay? Let's check out one more sentence. I take lines four and six to work. Once again, we're adding a number, so the line goes to the front. You mention it first, but we're talking about not just one subway line, 사호선 and 6호선. There are two lines, so of course, yeah, that's why the S goes right there. I take lines four and six to work. Hmm. If you just take line four, you can say, I take line four to work. Okay, job well done, everyone. That is a wrap for today's actual expressions. My morning commute starts with a subway journey to work. Um, I work in the afternoon, so I'm very fortunate to miss the morning rush hour but sometimes in the evening it gets quite busy. Once I get off the subway, my workplace is quite far away, so I have to walk for about 10 or 15 minutes to get there. But actually, I really enjoy walking. It's more healthy and it gives me time to sort of relax and have space before I arrive at work. And um, usually I avoid taking the subway as much as possible. So if I can walk anywhere, then I'll do that instead of taking the subway or I'll try to find a bus. Actually, I'm from London, so I've spent my whole life taking the subway to places and I really, I've never enjoyed it. So these days I try to find alternative routes wherever and whenever I can. First of all, thanks to Emma once again for sharing her wonderful story. That was today's actual story. Well, she sounds like she really enjoys walking. The very opposite of me, I hate to walk. So even if I'm going maybe to a store that's 10 minutes away, I prefer to just drive to the store. I'm a very lazy person, but Emma definitely is far from being lazy. Uh, she's always busy moving around from one place to another, enjoying outdoor activities, and definitely, as she mentioned, she really likes to walk. Uh, she did mention that, yes, she takes the subway. It's usually about a 10 to 50 minute walk to the subway station. So let's check out exactly what she said. I've picked out four sentences from her actual story. The first one is, my morning commute starts 
with a subway journey. You can also say a subway ride to work. Okay, that's a wonderful way of beginning your story. So, if by any chance, in the future you have um, a chance to talk about your commute, you can say this, my morning commute starts with a subway journey or a subway ride, okay? Even make use of this in an interview if you happen to do so. All right, so moving on to our next one. Once I get off the subway, I have to walk for about approximately 10 or 15 minutes. You can say 10 to 15 minutes or 10 or 15 minutes to get there. So, I have to walk for about 10 or 15 minutes. It is a 15 minute walk to work, right? That's what you can also say. I avoid taking the subway, meaning I try not to take the subway as much as possible. Okay, here we go. So the whole point is I avoid taking the subway. What does she try to do? She says, I'm from London, so I have spent my whole life, my entire life, many, many years taking the subway hmm. to places and I have never enjoyed it. So oftentimes, if you grow up doing something, if you do something so many times, you get sick of it. So I think that is what she is trying to say. She's mentioned so far, before she mentioned that she's from London, that she enjoys walking, that she tries to take the subway, and yeah, um, she says, I've spent my whole life, my entire life, taking the subway to places, this place, that place, and I've never enjoyed it. So even till this day, I try to avoid taking the subway. Okay, thanks one more time to Emma, and hopefully you'll enjoy a listen to today's actual story one more time. My morning commute starts with a subway journey to work. Um, I work in the afternoon, so I'm very fortunate to miss the morning rush hour, but sometimes in the evening it gets quite busy. Once I get off the subway, my workplace is quite far away, so I have to walk for about 10 or 15 minutes to get there. But actually, I really enjoy walking. It's more healthy and it gives me time to sort of relax and have space before I arrive at work. And um, usually I avoid taking the subway as much as possible. So if I can walk anywhere, then I'll do that instead of taking the subway or I'll try to find a bus. Actually, I'm from London, so I've spent my whole life taking the subway to places and I really, I've never enjoyed it. So these days I try to find alternative routes wherever and whenever I can. So everyone, did you enjoy today's lesson on commutes? I sure hope so. If you have any questions regarding our lesson, feel more than free to come to our homepage and ask questions. I will try my best to answer each and every one of them. Now next time I'll be joining you to talk about our weekends. So let's talk about what we do on the weekends. Fun things, boring things, things you hate to do. We'll also talk about what you would like to do on the weekends as well. What you can do is come to our homepage, just in case you don't know the address. The address is www.ebse.co.kr. Come by and just search for or look for Actual English with me, Jennifer Clyde. Okay, I'll catch you again next time. Until then, take care and bye for now.